Thank you all for being here. Um, this is so gratifying to see so many of you and so many of, of you who I haven't seen for a very long time. For those of you who don't know me well, I'm Susan Lake. I think everybody does know me here, actually. This is Monty and our daughter, Elizabeth. We are here to support two people. One, our daughter, Catherine, or Katie, who's 24 years old, and suffers, along with millions of others, from a neurodegenerative disorder for which there is no cure. We are also here to support Dr. Jeremy Schmalman, who, um, whose groundbreaking research in uh, the cerebellum um, uh, is extraordinary, which you will see shortly. He um, and his colleagues um, are, run the Laboratory for Neuroanatomy and Cerebellar Neurobiology. And their um, institute is at, is at Mass General. I'd like to tell you briefly about Katie. You can get a more extensive story on the website. Katie was normal until about 19 when her symptoms began to manifest themselves. She started to walk stiffly. Um, her hands tremored. When she spoke, her voice was gravelly and strained. And particularly distressing, her concentration wavered. And um, decisions that used to be secondhand um, came more slowly. Alarmed, Monty and I pulled her from her second year of college to try to determine what was happening. And over the course of two years, um, we were bounced, uh, we were like proverbial hot potatoes, bouncing from one physician to the next. Any of you who has a friend or a relative with a hard to diagnose disease knows this syndrome. We visited um, the speech doctor, and it, it was, uh, the d disease was suspected to be MS. The neurologist thought it might be um, Parkinson's, and on and on. Finally, uh, Katie was admitted to NIH in 2005. We met an extraordinary neurologist there, Dr. Margaret Timmons, who diagnosed Katie's disease as spinal cerebellar ataxia. It's, a, it's a, a mouthful, but you'll hear more about it in a moment. And Dr. Timmons, in turn, introduced us to Jeremy Schmaman. SCA 17 is a rare degenerative progressive neurological disorder, but it is a, among one of a growing or, and quite large number of um, spinal cerebellar diseases. Today, Katie is wheelchair bound. She's lost the ability to speak. We didn't have her here today for that reason, ask her here for that reason. And um, particularly distressing, she um, has dementia and memory loss. So the, the um, daughter who wanted at one time to be a poet, a ballerina, a model, and a teacher, um, those dreams are all snuffed. This diagnosis is particularly difficult, of course, if it's, a, if it's an offspring. And it's very easy to spiral into um, an attitude of hopelessness. With time, Monty and I um, began to comprehend that in order um, to get through this, we were resolved to develop a strategy toward um, first um, greater understanding for the disease and developing, a, hopefully, a solution. The catalyst for a lot of this was our um, really mind or eye-opening visits with Dr. Schmalman, who showed us that um, what we call big picture research is possible. and. Um, Schmalman has become Katie's neurologist and, for all intents and purposes, her primary physician. I'm going to turn over the um, podium now to Monty, who will introduce Dr. Schmalman. 